All right, hello, this is Christian. In this video, we're gonna take a look at data binding in React. Now, data binding is, as you as you see here, it's a mechanism or process of um, you know managing the flow of data from one point to another point, okay? So, and just like many other frameworks, React does the similar way. So we have what's called a one-way data binding. That is data going from the component, or we call this the source, out to the template or the DOM, or in, in this case, it's the view, okay? So going from the source out to the view, like you see here, so one-way binding. And the syntax using React is very simple. Um, just one method, right? The uh, curly brace here. And then the expression here is whatever the value you put inside here will be interpolated, in this case, interpolation. Or you can also bind to the attribute. Your attribute here refers to either a property, you know, attribute, class styles, and, and so forth, right? So very similar uh, structure here. Um, on the right side is just an example to show you how you can bind to a class. Remember, in React, you have to use the class name as opposed to a class and the, for the attribute because the class is a keyword. And then you bind a property, a variable to that class. And um, here, same thing, you're binding to the actual um, DOM, just displaying something to the user. So from the state, you have a user property, display that here. Okay, so this is one way binding uh, flowing from the source. What that means is that if you make changes to the source, then your data in the view will, re will um, be updated instantly, assuming that you're using a um, stateful component, okay? If you use a classless, uh, a function component, it's not gonna, you're not gonna see that, we, that change. <clears throat> the other way is also one-way binding. This time we, data is coming from the view into the source, okay? So in order to do that, you will have to bind to an event. An event will be things like unchange, unclick, on mouse enter, on mouse leave, and, and so forth, okay? So when that happens, you trigger a function call and you will call a function, either a function, or you can update the, uh, the state data directly right in here. In this example, I'm using a function to update. Um, actually, this is probably not correct. Uh, you should not put the parent here, okay? It's just a this update and, and that's all. Um, like, like you see over here, an example would be this handle user if I make some changes to the input tag here. Okay, and then uh, you will handle that in the function to make that change. And two-way binding in React is um, is not as you know, uh, I guess, handy as you would see in Vue or in Angular. Um, they had a, a way to do that. It's called linked state. I forgot what's called linked state mixing or something. But I think that's been deprecated, and so they resorted back to using this the almost like the traditional way of doing things. A little bit different, but it's still come almost the same. So in two-way binding, you go in either from the view to the source to the view, or you can say source to view to source, doesn't matter how you say it. So you have to use two things, okay? You use the regular expression to bind the data one way out from the source to the view, and then you will use the event to send the data back from the view back to the source. So it's a, it's a combination of both of these here, okay? So here's an example of this, um, same thing here for make changes. Notice I'm binding the value from the source out to the view directly to the value attribute and the input tag. And they wanna make any changes to this input. I'm sending the data back using a function to handle the change. And then you update that inside the, the source. Okay, so that's how you do in a React. Down here, it just um, kind of similar to what I just posted above, different ways where you would use um, the binding. Again, it's very simple in React, okay? All right, so let's go and um, create an application just to do an example of that. Now, I already have an example here. I call it pets app, but kind of loads kind of similar what we have for our um, unit component. So in here, I'm gonna go right into the components and I'll use the about component here. Okay, notice this is a function component. Remember, a function is stateless. Okay, so you can still bind data. You're not gonna see the change reflect right away because it's, it's stateless, okay? In order to do that, you have to use a class component or you have to use you know, the traditional way of doing things like the regular DOM manipulation. Um, but I mean, why would you do that? Because that's kind of defeats the purpose of React. Okay. So if you compare that to the app, um, the root model, this is a class component, right? So notice class has a, constructor and has props and then you have your this state properties in here. Now if you see this you know super with a slash here, um, you know just tell you it's say that it's deprecated, but don't worry, I think it has to do with the 
a conflict with the IDE as opposed to React. Yeah, React still uses Super, okay? So it's not really deprecated. So just ignore that issue. Okay, so uh, over here, now I'll show you just a very simple one. And let me see if this is still running. I think I should, app is still running. If it's not, let's run it first. Let's go to a terminal. And I wanna go back out to app. Okay, so npm start. I wanna make sure that's running and then we will begin. All right, um, let me close that for now. And then I'm gonna see if um, it's running. Okay, so this is the one. Uh, yeah, okay, so I wanna go to the about page and we're just gonna modify this page to, in, to show some data here, all right? And so go back in here. So I'm gonna show you the one we're binding from the uh, source. So the source will be up here, right? In the function. And let's say you have a data called, um, I don't know, we'll call it let a dog is equal to um, Otis, right? So that's the data from the source out to the view and you want to display right here. So we we'll put P here and then you just put here, I mean, dog, right? That's one way data binding, very simple like that, okay? And then um, you save it and go to the view and you should see the change right here, okay? Uh, you know, for, for let me make it this way, so it's probably easier, I'll put it right here. And um, so we can see right here, it's probably easier this way. Okay, and I'll close this and I'll make this a little bit smaller on this side over here. Let's do this. All right. Okay, here we go. So we see that the oldest is displayed here because it, it goes from the source out to the view. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this works fine. Um, only thing is that if you make changes, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna see it. Okay. So it's, instead of doing this way and keep doing this way, I'm going to change this function component to a class component. Okay, so you can see the reactive component right away. And so let's do that really quick. Let's just put here class and about, um, I think it extends, if I remember this correctly. Uh, extends uh, react component. Okay, and then we're gonna have a constructor right in here. And we'll um, pass in the props, super props here. Okay, and then now I'll put the dog inside here as an object. Okay, so I put, oh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's come this up for now. We'll create a state. This state is equal to a property of, um, call it dog, all this. I'll create another one for cat too, okay, cat, um, my law. Okay, so I have two properties in the state object. And then over here, I have to return, I have to um, do this return. Um, let me render function yeah. to put everything inside the curlies. So all the way here to the end, which is right here. Oops. Okay, so this is my component now. It's a, a reactive component because now it's, let me delete this and I'll clean a little bit over here like that. Okay. So the dog is no longer dog. I have to go to this dot state dot dog, right? Okay, so you can see it's it's shown up here. Okay, so we it's still one way data mining from the source out to the view. Okay, so now um, if I want to go from the view back to the source, then you would have to do usually bind to an input tag. Okay, so either an input, a select, or a text area. Only those three will actually collect data from the input to the to the, to the source. Okay, so let's say right here, I'm gonna put an input tag. I'm gonna bind input tag to it on change. And on change function, we'll bind to a function called this handle, um, handle change, okay? So we're gonna create a handle change in here. So in the, in the class space, I create another function called handle change, takes an event. Okay, and then inside here, I will bind the data coming from this input. Okay, what do I put in here? It's gonna send it back to the handle change. We, we handle that through the event object 
and then I'll, you know, uh, you can put here, for example, um, let data is equal to event uh, target that value. Okay, the target is the actual the actual element that's been targeted. So this is the target and its value, its value, and then get that assigned to data. And then I'm going to update the data over here. So I'm using dog. So I'm going to update the dog. So again, we learned that you have to use this state set state. Okay. And then we pass into this set state function, the actual dog property. I'm only changing that dog. I'm not changing the cat. Okay, so we do that. And then now, because it's reactive, you have to bind this function. Okay, there are a couple ways to do this. Um, one way is, you know, the, the way that we learn is to uh, do in here. So we can say this, that, oh, not inside the state, by the way. Uh, it's not a constructor, but not inside the state. So this, that handle change is equal to this that handle change that bind and then bind to this okay this refers to the state object which is the component here and you have to do this in order to bind this data function so you can use this set state inside your function okay this is one way and and i want to see how this works all right so um let's see did it did it work i guess it didn't work huh um let's see what's going on over here in the arrow function it has some error probably um, let's see. All right, it doesn't like my thing here for some reason. Um, let's see what's going on. It has a bug. Um, on change is this. Um, what's going on here? I... <clears throat> That's this one. All right, uh, let's see, I think I have some error in here. Extend class, not object line three. Three. Oh, the not children component. Okay. All right, so let's see, go back to the about. And all right, so here we go. You see that now if I type in like, um, uh, TTT, right? It updates right away because the data is coming from the input, right? We handle the change. We call this function, and then we pass the data from the target, which is the the input tag, to the data, and then we update the dog to that, and then it render because we we touched the property of the state, right? It causes the reaction to go back out to the view and make that state change. That's when you see that change right here. Okay, so this is actually um, kind of like two-way binding, but I'm sure it's not two-way binding. It's well, kind of, but um, so that's how you pass data from the source to the view and the view back to the source. Okay, so now we're, while we add it, now let's see how we can do um, two-way binding. Okay, so two-way binding is exactly like I just did. The only difference is that usually when you do two-way binding, um, you would bind the same property, the dog, to the same tag. So for example, if I refresh my app here, okay, you will see that if I go to the out page, okay, you see that the, the data has no value, but it is bound to the dead dog object. So to do that, I'll just basically go into the input tag over here and bind to the value attribute. You bind that with the this dot state dot dog. And there it is. As you can see, shows up here now. If I make any changes to my code over here, it's going to reflect both places. But now, if I do any changes to the input tag, you can see that it also reflects this as well. So I'm binding in here two ways, okay? Because data coming from the dog initially, the state object out to the view into this input tag, we set the value to that. But they want to want to make any changes to that same tag it calls back the same the function and it grabs the same data from the same input and it update the dog again and then it goes back again. So it's like, it's going circle here. That's why you can't see the changes in here because it's already updating. So we put out size, so you can kind of see that it's actually affecting the actual object. Okay, so uh, this is what I mentioned that you have to use the React, um, the class component to see the state change. If you don't do that, if you use just the um, function component, then you're not going to see it. And I'll show you, for example, here. So we use the cat as an example. Okay. So now using a regular function component, 
um, even though it's not a function component, I'll show you that it will behave the same way. So writing into inside a random function, okay, this is a function. So you can treat this like a random a function component. I create a, let's say, let's go down here and we're gonna duplicate this, you know, okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this one here and put it right below it right here. And we'll put the dog, we'll put the cat in here. Okay, you see the cat is down in Milo. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna bind, um, yeah, put a cat here as well. And we'll put here the same, the same function, okay? Uh, no, we'll so put your handle cat change. So we put another function up here. So we can see the difference, handle cat change. And we'll put cat here. Oops, come on. Okay, so we handle the cat. And then down here, I'm gonna create a variable here, okay? So a local function here, we'll call it uh, let um, local cat is equal to, and we'll put here um, you know, the same name. Uh, no, maybe not, I'll put here just cat for now, okay? And then I'm gonna display the data here next to um, the actual cat, put that, that dash, and then we'll put here um, local Okay, so this is also data binding, right? We're binding from the source out to the view, like I showed earlier in the beginning of the video. Uh, let me clear this. <clears throat> okay, so because it's you know, in the function, if I make changes to the cat, you're not gonna see it. So if I have another function here, for example, I'll put here um, constant, just put here a uh, change cat. And then um, change cat, I'll use the error function. And then the same as above. And I'll put here um, local cat is equal to event, same as above, target value. Okay. And then down here, instead of, um, you know, I change the handle cat, I'm going to call the cat change okay, or change cat. So now I'm calling a local function as opposed to a um, the global function down there, up there. Um, did I make a mistake something? Okay, yeah, it's not this down here, just be change cap. Okay, so I'm making a function, it's a local function inside the render function to make the change when I update the cat here. Notice that now I'm binding this value from this state, which is up here, right up here. And I render that to the view so we can see the change here. And if I make any changes, it's gonna call this function change cat, which is local function. And I'm gonna change the local cat here to something else besides the word cat. And then I output that here. So you can see, you can compare between the, the stateless and the stateful property, okay, or L value. So now if I go here, I change like something like this, right? Um, Okay, something happened here as well. Let's see what's going on. Uh, right value prop. Uh, okay, so so let's see. Let's uh, look cat. Event target mistype. Try again. Let's refresh this. Okay, lots of typos. All right, so here we go again. If I type t t t t, right? Notice that nothing changes. Okay. Um, because the value is always set to cat. Let, let me turn this off actually. And let's not bind that so we can see the difference. It didn't work because I bind to the cat. So what do I type? It's updating the Milo. So now if I do like, uh, you know, G, 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 right? If I, so notice that you don't see the change here because even though I update the cat, local cat, it never update the cat over here. And how, we, how do I know is it working? Well, you can, you can console log this, right? So console log. The uh, local cat. Okay, so we can see in the view over here what that looks like. So if I type in like C C C C, you notice that it does change, right? It does change because every keystroke it changes. It calls its function, updates the cat, but then it never updates the view. Okay, so in a way, it is data binding. Uh, it is still binding. You just don't see the change. Okay, so how do we know it's really working or not? Well, we just showed you that. Or you can go here and do something like, you know, um, uh, this dot set state, and then you can update 
here cat is equal to the local cat. Okay, now if I do that, and then if I change, make any change, it should go and update this cat, which is this Milo here, right? So if I do CCCC, you can see that it updates the, the cat object because it's a state object property, the local cat is not. Okay, so um, I hope it's not too confusing. So do review again, um, you know, take the time to understand the concept between data binding from the source to the view, view to the source and two-way data binding in React. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Thank you.